In this video, we're going to talk about inverse trigonometric functions. Suppose I ask you to find the exact value for tan inverse negative square root of 3. The graph of y equals tangent of theta technically does not have an inverse because the tangent line will intersect the function or rather, a horizontal line is going to intersect the function infinitely many times. In other words, y equals tangent of theta is not a one-to-one -one function. So what we have to do is we have to work with just a portion of y equals tangent of theta. And by restricting y equals tangent of theta to a particular interval, we can say that tangent of theta is 1 to 1 for that interval. In other words, if we use the interval negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, within this interval, y equals tangent of theta is 1 to 1. For a function to be 1 to 1, essentially means that there's a 1 to 1 correspondence from the domain to the range. In other words, no element in the range is the image of more than one element in the domain. So for every unique x value, there's a unique y value, which x maps to. Anyway, once we establish our restriction for the domain of y equals tangent of theta, now we can say that this portion of the function is 1 to 1, and since it's 1 to 1, it will have an inverse. To find the exact value of tan inverse, we need to look for some angle theta, where theta is between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2, such that it's tangent equals negative square root of 3. Knowledge of the unit circle is important in this problem, or having a unit circle as a reference, where you can look at it and determine which tangent or tangent of which angle would give you negative square root of 3. It turns out that the only angle within the interval, negative pi over 2, and positive pi over 2, which has a tangent of negative square root of 3, is the angle negative pi over 3. So this is our exact value for tangent of inverse negative square root of 3. Let's take a look at another example. Suppose I ask you to find the exact value for cosine inverse square root 2 over 2. Again, there is a horizontal line along the graph that will intersect the graph of y equals cosine of theta infinitely many times. So if we look at our graph for cosine, our basic graph, which oscillates between 1 and negative 1, you can see that any horizontal line we choose is going to pass through our graph infinitely many times. This is why the function is not 1 to 1. And this is why we have to place a restriction on our domain in order to work with cosine so that it has an inverse for a particular portion of the graph. Again, remember that for a function to be one-to-one, -one, 
a unique element in the domain matched to a unique element in the range. In other words, no element in the range of our function can be the image of more than one element in our domain. The appropriate domain restriction for the function y equals cosine of theta is 0 to pi, where theta is between the values of 0 and pi. Again, it's helpful to either be familiar with the unit circle or to have a unit circle handy. I'm just to create a quick sketch here. Here's angle zero. And here, moving 180 degrees, is pi. So I know that the angle the inverse cosine of square root 2 over 2 is going to be somewhere between 0 and pi. In other words, it's going to fall either within quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. There's only one angle theta within this interval that has a cosine of square root 2 over 2, and that angle is pi over 4. Because that has coordinate points, square root 2 over 2, square root 2 over 2. Therefore, we know that cosine inverse of square root 2 over 2 is the angle pi over 4. Let's take a look at one more example involving tangent. Recall that the domain restriction for the tangent function is negative pi over 2, pi over 2. So we know that theta has to be between these two values for the tangent function. Let's make a quick sketch of the tangent function. Here you can see that the function is not one to one. unless we restrict it to the values that we've determined, negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. By taking just this piece of the tangent function, it is 1 to 1, and therefore we can find an inverse for tan inverse of zero. We're looking for the angle theta between our restricted values where tangent is equal to zero. The only angle within our interval for which this condition holds true is angle zero. Therefore, tan inverse of zero is equal to zero. I hope you found these examples to be helpful, and we'll see you next time.